Hi everyone and welcome to this September Volatrinal Plan With Me video. We're gonna set up the first full layout of the year, which I'm just so excited about. I love all the rich and warm colors of fall and this time I was really inspired by the idea of a dark storybook forest. So that's kind of the main vibe today. We have some black pages, cats and mushrooms, but without further chit chat, let's get started with the video. We're gonna start from the cover spread as usual and I wanted to go with something a little bit different here. I think the end result might look quite intimidating but I promise it will be a lot easier when we go through all of this one step at a time. So I really wanted to create a fully black spread here and then we'll use a brown grid paper to write the monthly calendar on. But before that, the first step is the main painting. I was once again using this notebook's paper as my painting background because I'm very pleased with how it works with gouache paints. It's also thinner than regular watercolor paper I own, which helps to not make the notebook too thick over time. But anyway, I started with a pencil sketch here, which is just gonna help us figure out the main shapes in the picture. So we have this cat that's looking up and then some bigger and smaller mushrooms surrounding it. I knew I wanted to create a black background here, but I chose to go around these bigger shapes and leave them white. Though with gouache paints, you could technically color the whole area with the black color and then just paint over it, but it's a little bit more difficult to sketch that way. And sometimes, especially lighter colors, might not appear completely opaque over a black background. However, I'm not gonna bore you with the pencil sketching part for too long, so now it's time to take out the gouache paints and start adding the dark background. These are just the paint colors I was using, by the way. They could absolutely be replaced by other similar tones. And then we're gonna use a few different size brushes here. All the details of the tools I'm using are listed in the description as always. So you could also do the background as the last step after coloring the details you want, but I often find that it's easier to judge the color darkness while painting if you already have the background around the details. Often, if you've painted something against a white background, it's gonna look very different if you switch the background color from white to black. And I also wanted the background here to be slightly lighter in the middle, so I mixed a tiny bit more of the green and white shades and then applied this to the center part. With these dark shades, it's sometimes difficult to see how the color actually looks like before it dries down. So I was just trusting the process and after everything had tried, I thought it looked good enough for us to move on to the rest of the painting. So we're gonna start with the cat and whenever I paint with gouache paints, I always start with these messy background layers to cover the white paper basically that will slowly start to build the details on. I decided to go with an orange striped cat, which I thought went well with the rest of the colors here. And also my husband's family cat happens to be similar to this color. But yeah, so we're basically just layering on different shades of fur. I was using some bigger brushes first to lay down some of the color on certain areas and then went over all of that with lots of small strokes with a smaller brush. I tried to keep the upper part lighter and create this almost white halo around the cat's face and neck. 
This whole picture was definitely meant to be very dark, but I wanted to add just a few of these lighter points to create some contrasting highlights. So I feel like everything started pretty well with this picture, but the more I worked on it, the more I was struggling. So for example, I could not for the life of me figure out an eye shape or style for this cat. And then I started to struggle pretty much with everything else in this painting. I know it probably doesn't look like that in the video, but I actually spent so much time on this tiny painting that was supposed to be fairly quick and easy. Somehow I couldn't find colors I liked for the mushrooms, I couldn't decide what style I wanted to use, and I felt like everything looked messier than I wanted. Well, that was probably because I was just loading on more and more colors to try to make everything work. I also painted some of these leaves and ended up covering some of the smaller ones later. I thought they added almost some unnecessary busyness to this picture. But yeah, I don't really know what to tell you guys. Sometimes you're feeling it while painting and sometimes you're just not. And for me, it happened to be the latter one with this painting but I felt like I had already invested too much time to start it over as well. So eventually, when I got the painting to a point that I was pretty happy with, I decided to scan this to my computer and see if I could edit some of the areas I didn't like digitally. <music> Thank you. 
I know this might not be super helpful or realistic for all of you to follow at home, which I'm very sorry about, but I was planning to add this painting to my upcoming full shop collection, which is why I wanted to make it work any way I could, and which is also probably why I had all this pressure about the painting in the first place. But anyway, this digital polishing is something I do for all the pictures I sell, and many of the shop products are completely drawn on a computer. I think digital painting is so much easier, and you're basically able to do pretty much anything with it. Personally, I still try to maintain my regular drawing and painting skills on a paper, which is just a personal preference, but you are definitely able to take your art to another level if you learn to work with these digital programs. Anyway, I know this part is pretty fast in the video, but I just basically tidied up the painting by adding some sharper details, fixed some of the coloring, smoothed out some of the messier parts, and also finally drew an eye for our cat. I also like to add these glowy dots to my paintings. I think it adds this almost magical touch to them. But after that, I just printed this out on matte photo paper and you'll see the final difference here. I think I'll still fix this painting a little bit before adding it to my shop. There were still some parts I wasn't completely happy with, but I think for what we need today, it was completely fine and we can move on with this cover page. So next, I actually cut this whole thing into this oval shape and then we'll start to draw this old style swirly border around it. I think this is the part that completely changed this spread in my opinion. It creates so much attention around this dark painting and especially against the black background. But I did have a little bit of trouble deciding how to color this. So I sketched the whole thing with a pencil and then started to go over it first with these light colored pencils because I thought they might work on the black paper. However, these specific colored pencils are quite dry and waxy, so they didn't really have the effect I was going for. So next I pulled out my trusty paint pens and started to draw these swirls with different shades to build some highlights and shadows to the shapes and also just to figure out what I wanted here. In the end, I really liked how this whole thing turned out and I was very happy that I decided to push through the rough stages with the painting. But anyway, we still have a few steps left here, so next we'll continue with the September title. I wanted to do something a little bit different with the titles this month, so we are kind of leaning into this vintage storybook vibe and creating these big decorative letters. I didn't use any specific font or picture for the letters this time, but you will find lots of inspiration for letters like this if you search for Victorian or vintage style letters on Pinterest, for example. 
I think it's really important to sketch the letters out first because it's very difficult to estimate how much room the title will take in the end. And then to make things even more special here, I decided to take out one of my trusty foiled paints in this bronze color that I thought suited the rest of the colors on this theme very well. After the title, I finally added the brown paper here to write the monthly calendar on. And I also wanted to add just a few more swirls and decorations on this spread to kind of tie this whole spread together. So we are drawing some corner swirls with the same paint pens. And then at the very end, I thought we needed something more to the top and bottom of this whole spread to somehow connect these two pages together. So I went with this simple thick line thingy with the bronze paint. And I think it definitely helped to create even more drama on this spread. But that's finally it for this dark cover spread. I think this is very different from many of the themes I've done recently. But I was also very pleased with how this all came together. But now let's move on and next we're gonna set up the monthly planning spread. I wanted to include some of the black paper on this spread too. So we are starting by adding these ripped black borders to the top and bottom. By the way, if I didn't mention earlier, this black paper is just regular black copy paper. So it's thinner than craft paper, which makes it easy to use in the journal without making the pages too thick. But anyway, then I also added a few of these brown paper boxes on the spread. So the next step is to write all the titles with the same bronze paint. And somehow I went and accidentally deleted all the footage of me doing that. So because of that, I kind of set up this fake spread at the end of my journal so that I could at least show you how to write these titles. So please bear with me. I tried to keep it as close to the original as possible. So we're starting with the big planning title and I used the same style as we did on the cover spread where the first and last letters of the word are bigger than the rest. We are using the same bronze paint and then you just need patience to slowly paint each of these letters. In general, I feel like I've had so much fun with these different title fonts this year. In the past, I almost always used some type of cursive font, but when you do that long enough, you kind of get bored of it. And I think the titles are just as important part of the themes as the drawings, colors, and so on. Anyway, so under the planning title, I wanted to use this brown box just to set up my monthly focus. So at the beginning of the month, I'll take a moment to really think about what is the priority of the month ahead and really narrow that down to only a few things. Then on the next spread, I divided the space here at the top into these four sections where I can write a small overview plan for each week. I only filmed this one title here on the fake spread because on the real one, I just wrote the same thing to all these basically. And then the brown boxes at the bottom will be for the monthly habit tracking, which is something I'm trying to get back to. I felt a little bit burned out with the habit trackers, especially last year, but I've kind of got back to it. And something I like to do is to only track a few important things so I won't get too overwhelmed by it. But now let's get back to the actual spread. So that was pretty much all the footage that I accidentally deleted. And now we can start the painting decoration on this spread. This was actually the last thing I filmed this month. You'll see after this spread is done that I filmed the whole weekly section beforehand. I guess I was still a bit traumatized by the cover page painting. 
But yeah, so I had already lightly sketched out this small forest painting with a tree stump. Is that what you call this in English? Um, and then there will be another cat and some mushrooms and leaves again. So this time my main goal was to keep things simple. I wanted to keep my layers and colors clean and only add a minimal amount of texture and details to avoid creating anything too messy again and to avoid spending unnecessary amount of time with this. And I'm happy to report that it actually worked. So I started with these solid color layers again. I kind of went over the whole picture and then we'll start to get a little bit more detailed first with this sleeping cat. As always, it will be very helpful to look for some reference pictures of sleeping cats that will help you with the shape and position of the different body parts. And then you can always change any details or colors to whatever you like. I went with an orange white cat again. So the whole belly part of the cat will be white and then we'll add the orange color to the back. Again, I tried to keep the colors very minimal and just slowly build the few details we needed using this tiny brush. But after the cat was done, I went over the rest of the painting with some darker and lighter colors to create some minimal shadows and highlights. And I also added some grass strokes to the crown. In all its simplicity, I was actually really happy with how this turned out and it just goes to show that sometimes less is more. But that's finally all for the planning spread and now let's move on to the last big section of the month, which is this weekly layout. I really wanted to create another black spread here, but actually the black areas are just the edges of the Dutch door section we'll create here in the middle. So the Dutch door pages will be for the weekly setup and the monthly reflection. And we have just enough pages here to cover every other spread with a brown craft paper to make the whole thing a little bit more interesting. I would have used the brown grid paper we used earlier, but I didn't have enough pages of it left. So I went with just regular craft paper instead that I think still worked just fine. 
But anyway, before we fill the weekly pages, I thought we could first decorate the first black spread here. And we are starting with another big title here at the top using the same foil paint. I know these titles are probably not for everybody. It's definitely a lot different from the clean, minimal font we used last month. But something I personally enjoy about blood journaling is that it allows you to explore different styles and subjects. And I really like to switch things up like that in case you haven't noticed. But anyway, after this big week's title, I thought that a foiled cursive quote would fit this page very well. So I went with this beautiful, very full appropriate quote by Oscar Wilde that says, And all at once summer collapsed into fall. It was so difficult to keep the paint even for these letters. They were quite small to work with the brush, so it's probably not my best work. But in the end, I think the idea itself worked out. But now let's move on to the decorations here. So I desperately wanted to paint something else than mushrooms here. And that's when I saw this picture that inspired me to paint some red flowers on this page instead. I did some loose sketches of the flowers out of camera to get a better idea of the placements and then we'll start painting them using the remaining paints I still had on my palette from the cover page painting. So I started with these darker red flowers and I think the key to keep these looking pretty and delicate is to leave some black peeking through for example, to separate the petals and also between the other flowers and leaves. I was using this very small brush in order to control the strokes as much as possible, but if you find it difficult, you could always go in with a black pen later and add some of those separating lines that way. But anyway, I wanted there to be some variation in the colors, so I added some lighter orange tones to the flowers and then some brighter red ones to mix it up. And then we'll also paint some leaves here and there. I'm not gonna lie, this did take quite a long time to paint, but I personally love painting small stuff like this. There's something so therapeutic about just slowly painting these same shapes everywhere and seeing the whole thing slowly come together. And I think that was exactly what I needed at this part of filming the theme. But after all the flower and leaf shapes were done, I finished everything with these white dots on the center parts of the flowers, which brought a little bit more highlight to them. And then you could also darken some of the inner parts of the flowers and leaves with a darker color if you'd like to finalize the shapes even further. But I was pretty happy with the colors like this. So the last step I did was to paint this bronze border behind the flowers that will also later create to the top of the last spread. I really like how this turned out, somehow with the title and the quote, it created such a romantic look to this page. But before we finish the decorations on the other black page, let's first fill all the pages here in the middle. I decided to use this first page for the first three days of September, so the short week with only Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And this also happens to be a time of my new shop launch, so I'll probably have many things to do and remember, so I try to leave some room just for that. But after this one, we'll flip over to the first white spread and I'll use this one for the next two full weeks in September. I kept the weekly layouts very, very simple this time. I think I might add some stickers or washi tapes here later, which is something I've kind of enjoyed doing recently. 
But yeah, I just have room for some good old daily to-do lists here. And whenever I need to save space on these weekly pages, I usually combine Saturday and Sunday like this. The next brown spread will be for the other two weeks in September and I'll probably do something very similar here. So I'll set that one later. And then we have one more full spread left, which I wanted to use for the monthly reflection. So this is a spread I always include in my monthly setups and I fill them at the very end of the month to practice some self-reflection and to try to get better at the things I often seem to struggle with. So I started with some of these thoughtful questions like what's on my mind, then where I need to grow, and lastly, what am I grateful for? But then on the next page here, I clued these two boxes to list the ups and downs of the month. And then lastly, I like to include this rating system on my reflection pages, where I rate the whole previous month on these few different areas of my life from 1 to 10. I highly recommend you to try something like this. It really is quite interesting how similar things and troubles start to appear if you use a spread like this over time. Then we still have this last craft page left. And here I decided to do a quick knitting update section. I've actually been knitting a lot recently. And if you guys have any good knitting podcast recommendations, please let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for new ones. And I know there is quite a lot of overlap with the bullet journaling and the knitting community, which is really interesting. But anyway, then the last thing here is a favorites section that you you can use to list any of your favorite things from the past month. So that's all for the actual bullet journaling content. And then the last thing to do here was to paint the similar flowers to the black spread. So this time I made them hang from the top of the spread, but otherwise the colors and style are exactly the same as we did before. So I'll just play some relaxing music for you and then come back for the final flip through. I don't know if this was necessarily the most cohesive fall theme I've done, but I did end up liking these black spreads especially, and I hope you got some new ideas from it as well. If this was your first time around here and you'd like to stay tuned for more, please consider subscribing. But other than that, I guess that's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.